I just got something new, and it came in this box. So this is the amazing new Canon RF 35mm 1.8 macro STM lens. Uh, initial impressions are it seems solidly built. Um, you know, it's really hard to tell too much about it until we get it out into the real world. Something I'm interested about is this focus ring. What am I really going to use it for? Because on the Canon, I have these three, on the Canon R5, I have these three dials. The back dial here where my thumb goes, and the other back dial, I guess, both are operated by your thumb, and then this trigger finger dial here. I have these mapped out already to do my ISO up top, my aperture down here, and my shutter speed right there. Or if I'm shooting on a like aperture priority or whatever, I have this one handles my exposure compensation. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to use the RF ring for. Uh, if you have this or another RF lens and you actually do use this control ring, please leave me a comment and let me know where you've mapped it to because I'm always interested in learning you know, new ideas from you guys on how I can best use this gear. Um, I want to test this out in like real world settings, so I'm going to head down to our local pizza place and beer place down on the corner and test it out and get some real world pictures, test out the macro capabilities, test out how the focusing works, how quickly it finds people's faces, and a little vlog test. We'll see how this thing does vlogging. I, it won't do good, but we're going to have fun. So, first question is... Is this a good vlogging lens? Uh, I really like the f1.8 aperture, but 35 millimeters is pretty tight for a good vlogging setup. I have it on a ridiculous pole here, but pay attention to how the lens stabilization works. Um, I think on the GoPro up top, you can kind of see what I'm doing to make this this whole thing work. And down on the corner here is our neighborhood beer spot, uh, pizza spot, and I work helping them out with social media stuff. For the recording right now, I am shooting on 4K, 24 frames per second, IPB compression, HQ 4K. And I don't know about like ND filters or anything like that. So I just set it to 1.8 for blurry backgrounds. How's that look? So I'm sure I'm at like two thousandth of a second shutter speed, which is totally wrong for video, but I also don't really care. Yeah, this setup's ridiculous. The microphone is attached to my stick with rubber bands, three rubber bands. And it's on a monopod, like way out, like there's my how far my arm reaches. So is this a good vlogging setup? No. Okay, we're getting near Last Chance Pizza, so I'm putting this away. I'm gonna take some photos. So here I am inside of Coven Craft, and I want to take some photos to use for their social media and also their website. And they wanted to advertise that they got this new beer from Dylan Dan Brewery, the Sweet George's Brown. So I took that vertical shot and then I wanted to make sure I get a nice horizontal one right here. And you can see how this looks at 1.8. Looks really nice and sharp. And if you zoom into the details and really look at that thread, you can see that the focus just nailed it on that sign. Now I wanted to get some shots of the owner uh, pouring. And we can see on this first test shot, it looks like the eye autofocus missed a little bit. Seems like it hit the hat, not quite the eyeball. But thankfully we had enough time. We can 
let the lens redeem itself and on these next few shots it nailed the focus really nicely right on the eye. So I got a couple vertical, couple horizontal and they turned out super clean, super crisp and I really love the quality we're getting out of this lens. Then I wanted to get a couple more shots of the owner handing me the beer over the bar and this way we could showcase the color of the beer and the glass and the nice head. So for that one I had the eye autofocus going and then I adjusted my focus and got it nice and sharp right on the beer and on his hand. And then another one on his eye and the eye autofocus worked perfectly. And then I wanted to test out the features of the macro side of this lens so i got some detail shots of the bubble on the head of the beer you can see at 1.8 it is super thin depth of field but nice magnification with that 0.5 magnification and nice and sharp too even all the way wide open i also shot some at 7.1 we can see there to increase the depth of field a little bit and really see more of the beer here's just a nice little overview of how thin that depth of field is then I figured I did have to test out the product. If I was going to be taking shots of it, I had to make sure it was good beer. And I also wanted to test out how this lens handled capturing the eye when it was backlit. So those bright windows from behind are really bright, but we can see that it nailed the eye focus really, really well in these shots. Also took some product shots so they can advertise their CBD products and we can see at 100% it seems to have really nice chromatic aberration not too much blue or green fringing there. I think that one will look good on their Instagram and yeah no fringing looks really nice at 1.8. Then I, I headed over to Pizza Land to get some before and after shots of the pies going in and out of their oven. It's kind of fun working around a busy little kitchen like that, but these shots I could have done not at 1.8 to showcase more of the pizzas, but I'm really testing out the sharpness of this lens all the way wide open. And I like the little action shot with that Hawaiian pizza being dropped on there. I can see that the details are nice and sharp, even though the depth of field is so, so shallow. I moved over and got a couple shots of this guy making the crust. I was really hoping he was gonna throw it up for me like in the cartoons, but I guess that's not completely necessary. Again, I was just testing out the eye autofocus and seeing how it did with the mask on and with him not looking right at the camera. And the lens handled it really well for the most part. You can see it's nice and sharp right on his face there. And I just love the tones and the color and like how bright these images came out. It's super nice. And got a little action shot of him tossing the dough here. Again, nailed the eye even though he wasn't looking quite at the camera. This is an example of it missing focus. It jumped to the back. I'm not sure if that's because the tray he was bringing down got in the way, but we can see on the next shot, it's still a little out, but closer. But on this third shot at 100%, super tack sharp right on his face. And the lens performed well in the rest of this series. Then it was cheese time. So I got some shots of our guy here dropping the cheese on, and then I moved down at this lower angle to get another perspective, and the focus worked perfectly. I'm gonna move over to the topping station. Again, I'm just trying to capture the whole story of how these pizzas are made. So I'm at this vertical, and I wanna make sure I get a little bit of the ingredients in the corner, and the pie we can see at 100% there is nice and sharp. And then we got him up in the corner and our other guy in the background throwing the pies. And the eye autofocus worked really nicely. Then moving over to the pizza oven. Here we can get the shots of the pies coming out. We got them going in. Now we see them coming out. Really nice, gorgeous colors, both on the pizza and from the lens and really super sharp at 1.8. Just trying to make this pizza look 
delicious and this lens is doing a good job for that. I like the angle of view here at 35 because it's kind of a wide angle, but it's not super distorted. We still get these good details and it doesn't look all fish eye, -y. fish eye. -y. And we can see nice straight lines up there on the pizza oven. Now moving over and finishing up the story of these pizzas, showing them going into the box. And this one looks like it missed focus a little bit. It's down here on his apron. So those couple of shots are out of focus. And I was going with the eye autofocus, but on this next one, it nailed it. And on the rest of them are nice and sharp on the eye. Moving back over to Cove and Craft, the beer side of this establishment, we wanted to get some more shots of this Eddy line beer that they're featuring. So again, went with some eye detect shots and then had my focusing point on the can and took a couple of shots of that also. So we got really good product advertising, really nice colors coming out of this can and also advertising for the owner himself. And the focus over here, it was a little bit better lit than the pizza shop. So the photos came out super, super nice. And wanted to really feature the can and show, just have the color of the beer in the background. So I focused on that and it came out really clean, really sharp. And again, wanted some kind of detail shots of the head. I don't love this photo in particular, but it's a good example of what you can get with this lens. And then my pizza was ready. I, I like getting the Mediterranean pizza with no onions. So I had to get a shot of that. So that is a wrap for this photo shoot. All right, a couple of final thoughts about this little lens. Uh, it's been really fun to use for the past couple of days. I love the 35 millimeter focal length. I think it's actually super versatile. It's just long enough that you can get decent portraits without showing too much distortion, but it's wide enough that you can get those really cool environmental portraits. Usually people think of 50 millimeters as kind of the standard focal length for getting a comfortable image that is similar uh, field of view to what your eye usually recognize, but I really like the way the 35 millimeter works. Uh, as you saw in those examples, it's nice and sharp at 1.8 and working with the Canon R5, the eye detect autofocus works pretty well. I can't say it's 100% uh, hit rate because some of those shots were simply missed. Some of them jumped to the background. Some of them focus like on the hat of the owner, but it works pretty well and I would definitely trust it if I was going out for like a wedding or something like that. I think this is one of my new favorite lenses to have. Uh, speaking of weddings, I think something this lens is great for is getting those nice macro detail shots. As you saw, those pictures of the beer were super sharp and it has that 0.5 magnification from the macro. So that is super nice. And I think this is going to be perfect for weddings. Something like the before the ceremony shots where you're taking photos of the bride and groom getting ready for the ceremony. And then you might step away for a little bit of time to get those detail shots of the rings and the flowers and all the other things. This little lens can do all of that. The 1.8 aperture lets in a whole bunch of light and that macro is awesome. So I think this is definitely gonna be the lens that lives on my camera when I shoot some weddings, like I'm going out to do this weekend. Some other things that I really enjoyed was the lens stabilization when I was just messing around with it here. I was shooting half second exposures at 35 millimeters with no shakiness, no blur at all, which is something I could never do without the IBIS and without the greatly stabilized lens. I know I mentioned it before, but I'm not sure what to do with this aperture ring or not the aperture ring, the RF control ring. So anyone who has like the R5 or 6 with a RF lens, let me know what you guys use that control ring for. Um, Overall, I'm super happy with this little lens. It's not too expensive and it adds a nice bit of versatility to your kit. 
I would like to get some comments from you guys. What do you want to see tested next with this lens? I have a few things in mind, obviously. Astro Photos is one of them. I'm gonna see how good it is at 1.8 if the stars up here in the corners are nice and sharp, but what else would you guys like to see? I'm really looking forward to using this lens a whole bunch more in the future. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions and that's where I'm going to leave it for today. If you want to see any more of my work, especially with this new fun 35 millimeter lens, you can follow me right here on Instagram. And that is where I'm most active. I post most of my work and you guys can send me a message and we can connect there. Again, my name is Alex McGregor. Thank you guys so much for watching. And when the stars are out, I'll see you there.